All right, how to heal someone every time and never fail again. Change this one thing and you'll be bringing back people from the dead. Let's get into the show. All right, number one, it is by the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Mark two, and Jesus said unto the man with palsy, Jesus equated number one, healing with the forgiveness of sins. So example, you do not believe that when you ask for forgiveness of your sins, that Jesus may or may not forgive you. Why? Because the Bible says it is done. It is finished. So what the atonement says is that there was an exchange. There was reconciliation between God and man that he both has reconciled. He has favored. He has restored and he has paid the price by his blood and by the power of his death, burial and resurrection out of the grave. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the grave lives on the inside of you. So when you pray for healing and when you pray for sickness, it should be the same as when you pray for the forgiveness of sins. You know that Jesus will forgive you of your sins. You don't think he may or may not forgive you. So the same thing, you should not think that he may or may not heal. It was paid for by the blood. So watch how Jesus equated the forgiveness of sins and healing and sickness all in one. Because the greatest sickness and sin that we have is sin. Romans, it says that the power of sin is the law. Because you're not under grace. But the grace of God is where the power of God is. That's where the Holy Spirit is. That's the blood of Jesus. That's the name of Jesus. Because it said the law had no power to save. It had no power to deliver us from sin, being slaves to the devil and Satan. But it said Jesus came into the world to both deliver the world from sin and destroy the works of the devil. Sin, sickness, illness, disease is a work of the devil. So it must be destroyed, but it's already been destroyed by his finished work on the cross. By his stripes, you were healed. By his blood. All right. Now, you might be thinking, hey, Winston, I pray for people. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm Christian and they still die. So there's two reasons for this. Number one, third John chapter one, verse two, it says that I pray that you shall prosper in health as your soul prospers. OK, when it comes to healing, know these two things. Your spirit is perfect. Your soul is not. Your spirit, the Holy Spirit that lives on this inside of you is God, the fullness of the Godhead, all the power of God. But the soul is not perfect, is not pure. It's where all your emotions, all your fear, all your doubt, all your worry, anxiety live on the inside. So if you are praying from your soul and not from the spirit and from the scriptures, you're not going to be effective. You're not going to see results. We have to do what the scripture says to do. So when you're praying for others, number one, their soul <laughs> needs to be cleansed. It needs to be healed by the blood of Jesus, by the name of Jesus, by saying the scriptures over them. The power of God is the word of God because it says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Power of life and death is in the tongue. If they're praying, if they're saying things, if they're speaking death and not life, Duh, they're going to die. <laughs> but that's why the Bible says to speak life. Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. The kingdom got to work. But from the Christian, you cannot pray from your soul. You must pray from your spirit. Luke 17 and 21. It says, neither say low here or low there, but the kingdom is within you, within you. And also John 7 and 38. Jesus says, he that believe in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly flows living waters. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. The power that was living in Jesus, operating in him, it operates in you from your belly. So the problem that most Christians have is that they do not know how to get the kingdom out of them accurately. Example, how you can know when you're praying in the flesh, and from your soul versus praying from your spirit, the Holy Spirit. 
And there's two reasons for this. Number one, the level of sickness in your own eyes. And then number two, the level of closeness to the person to you. Number one, you pray differently for a cancer than you do a headache. Why? Because you think you got to do something differently for cancer versus a headache. But it says everything that is named that is named in heaven or in earth has to bow at the name of Jesus. It has to bow at the scriptures, not you, how much you pray or how much you fast or anything. It's by the blood of Jesus, by the name of Jesus. Number two, you pray differently for family and friends versus strangers because you're worried. <laughs> but that's not faith. That's fear. And you have to believe the scriptures, believe in Jesus, believe the gospel, and believe in the blood. The blood work. <laughs> Example of this. Have you ever noticed that when kids pray for you and you're sick, you recover? Why? They don't have all this religiosity of, oh, I got to figure out the demons, and I got to figure out the generational curses, and I got to fast, and I got to... All this million things that we think we got to do, that's work. It says that the gospel, um, it says, how did the gospel come to you? Did it come by works and labor or did it come by hearing the preaching of faith? Faith in what? Faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the power of Jesus. Wherever the word of God says, wherever the scripture says, believe it. And also, we're not doing what the Bible says to do. The Bible says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So most of the time, we do not know how to get the kingdom of God, the power of God out of us. It says that the spiritual gifts are living in earthen vessels, the living on the inside of us. But if we have all this power, all these riches, but we don't know how to get it out of us, it's just like having a bank account with a million dollars or a billion dollars, but knowing, not knowing how to withdraw the money. You're going to be frustrated. It's like, I just gifted you a sports car, the car of your dreams, but it's a stick shift. Your Christian walk in healing and raising the dead and prosperity and wealth, it's going to be bumpy. You're going to stall out because you don't know how to get it out of you. But do whatever scripture says to do. The Bible says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, uh, heal lepers, baptize in my name, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So this is all you have to do. Make direct contact with the person at minimum. The apostles and disciples, they were so able to get the power of God out of them, the dispensation of the Holy Spirit out of them, that their shadows were healing people, that they could pray on a piece of cloth and fabric. And when people received it, they were healed also. Same thing with Jesus. The woman with the issue of blood, she said, if I touch just the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. He was dispensing the power. He got the power out of us, right? Um, out of himself. So likewise, the way we get the power out of us at minimum, if we're not operating <laughs> in our shadow ministry yet, <laughs> at minimum, touch and agree. <laughs> and lastly, the thing you have to do, do what the Bible says. It says that you have to cast out demons. Some sicknesses are tied to demons, right? So you have to command and tell demons what to do. You can't just say, the Lord God rebuke you. The demon's still there. <laughs> Jesus, when he was healing, he said, come ye out. He said, <laughs> he said, open. He, he called Lazarus, rise. He told the lame man, walk. <laughs> they moved from intercession to decrees, commands, and proclamations. Prophesy. Tell that body, body be healed in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. Command it to happen. It says, anything you ask in my name, it shall be done unto you. Amen. Bro, either this Christian stuff work or it don't. <laughs> either the Bible is true or it's not. So go out in power, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All power has been given unto Jesus. Same power that raised Christ from the grave lives on the inside of you. There is no power in hell or a demon or Satan that does not obey God. Grace and peace. <laughs>